उसका सब प्रॉपर चलता है कल उसके बैंक अकाउंट में पंद्रह हजार रूपए का फ्रॉड हुआ है पता है इसको तो कोई टेंशन ही नहीं होती है देखना टेंशन क्यों मेरी कोई गलती नहीं थी फिर भी फ्रॉड होने पर मैंने तुरंत बैंक को इन्फॉर्म कर दिया आरबीआई कहता है अगर आपके अकाउंट से किसी ने धोखे से पैसे निकाले हैं तो बैंक को जल्द से जल्द इन्फॉर्म कीजिए तीन दिन के अंदर इन्फॉर्म किया तो कोई नुकसान नहीं होगा जितना लेट करोगे उतना ज्यादा नुकसान और सुन सब चलता नहीं है प्रॉपर चलाना पड़ता है आर कहता है जानकार बनिए सतर्क रहे मोदी सरकार की गारंटी सबका अपने पक्के घर का सपना होगा पूरा चार करोड़ पक्के घरों का निर्माण हमारा संकल्प विकसित भारत Good evening and welcome to Doordashan Kendra Kuhima. I'm Ila Susan with the news. First, the headlines. Governor Laganisan inaugurates Central Agricultural University Regional Agri Fair. Conservation, Konama Nature Conservation, and Tragopan Sanctuary celebrates 25 years. Naglin State BGP protest against corruption. And the Union government introduces new three new criminal bills incorporating changes. And now the news in detail. Governor Laganesan inaugurated the Central Agricultural University Regional Agri Fair Northeast India at Agri Expo Chumukedima in the presence of Special Guest Deputy Chief Minister T R Ziliang. The governor remembered the father figure and architect of First Green Revolution, Dr M S Swaminathan, and said that he, along with other agricultural scientists, have saved people from food famine and made the country not only self-reliant in agriculture but also also converted India into a food exporter to the world. He also added that agriculture in almost all the northeastern states is based on traditional techniques which primarily rely on organic and natural methods of crop as well as animal rearing which is a very big as asset as the world today is shifting towards quality output rather than quantity output. He urged the officials from the agricultural department and line departments to make full use of the human resources that have assembled at our doorstep. In his address, the Deputy Chief Minister said that for Naglin, which is basically an agrarian state, this fair holds special significance and will help the people of the state in particular to adopt scientific and more sustainable agricultural practices in order to become a major producer and exporter of agricultural products. The conclave with the objective to ignite agri-revolution connecting agripreneurs to a circular economy will be held till the 14th of December. Exhibition stalls from various departments from the Northeast are being set up. In the state of Nagaland, which has such a huge potential in agriculture to grow and for the region to become a major player. Having said this, it would be in, incomplete without giving special mention to the Central Agriculture University in Pal for organizing this regional fair and also farmers and students conclave and for choosing the state of Nagaland to host this grand event. In more state news, conservation of Konama Nature Conservation and Tragopan Sanctuary celebrated 25 years today at Community Hall, Terhotsiese Konama, with special guest Sheringin Longkomer, Speaker Naglin Legislative Assembly. Longkomer appreciated the Konama community for taking up the efforts in creating awareness in conserving Tragopans in the last 25 years. He also encouraged the community and the people of Konama to continue to preserve the Tragopan Sanctuary in Konama village as Tragopan is the state bird. 
During the program, a brief uh, history of Konama Nature Conservation and Dragban Sanctuary was highlighted by Chairman Keja Serie Miyase. Also, short speeches were delivered by special invitees Tefal Huvi Solo, retired principal secretary, and LH Tangi Manan, retired commissioner and secretary. Having learned from the conservation journey and its potential, the rich biodiversity also serves as a res knowledge reserved to the research, scholars, and natural enthusiasts and lovers. The chairman of Konoma Pasa and Konoma Village, village elders, and all the dignitaries who are here today at the foundation stone laying ceremony of the modern education for sustainable development center and the celebration of the Konoma Nature Conservation and Trakuban Sanctuary Trust. And my colleagues, two of my colleagues are with us this morning. I would like to welcome them also in the name of our villages, on behalf of our villages, that is Dr. Kekin Rulin Gomez, Honorable Advisor, School Education and SCERT from 10 Norton Angami AC and Mr. Even as the Income Tax Department continued to search several locations linked to Congress Rajya Sabha MP from Jharkhand, Dheeraj Sahu, and seized unaccounted cash amounting to over 300 crore rupees, the BGP Nagland staged a dharna yesterday. Thomas Mark, the spokesperson, BGP Naglin, while condemning the Congress, said that it is the responsibility of the citizens to fight against corruption and urged all to voice out and condemn corruption by the Congress MP. He said that each one of us is responsible towards nation building and it is our duty to voice against corruption in the country. Meanwhile, Benjamin Yepto, state president, appealed to the government to take strong action against the corrupt people. The dana was held at Trinity Tower, Daheka village in Dimapu. Lovers, party workers, so bahadu, so thanks Chief spokesperson, I mean, I media. Ki koisha, I mean, so bunishe. Congress stands for corruption. Corruption is the greatest enemy of our nation. Corruption is against humanity, and corruption is against every religion. That is why. Our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi has called all of us to be responsible and declare The union government will introduce three new criminal bills incorporating the changes recommended by the Parliamentary Standing Committee. The three legislations, namely Bhartiya Saksya Bill 2023, Bhartiya Nyaya Sanhita Bill 2023, and Bhartiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita Bill 2023, that sought to replace the British-era laws were introduced in the Lok Sabha in August this year. Talking to the media outside Parliament today, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahla Joshi said the Standing Committee has given several recommendations on the three bills and considering them, new bills will be brought uh, and, the, and the earlier bills will be withdrawn. He added that the new bills will be introduced today. These three uh, new bills are intended to replace the Indian Penal Code, 1860 Criminal Procedure Act, 1898 and the Indian Evidence Act of 1872. In Madhya Pradesh, Chief Minister designate Dr. Mohan Yadav will take oath as the Chief Minister tomorrow. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and other senior BGP leaders will also attend the swearing in ceremony. Modi will come to Bhopal tomorrow at 11 a.m. According to the information, the swearing in ceremony will be held tomorrow at 11.30 at Motilal Nehru Stadium in Bhopal. 
Union Home Minister Amit Shah, BJP President J.P. Nada and Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath will also attend the swearing-in ceremony. Dr. Mohan Yadav reached Raj Bhavan yesterday and met the Governor Mangubhai Patil and staked claim to form the government after being nominated as the leader of the BJP Legislative Party. Meanwhile, State Congress President Kamal Nath met Chief Minister Designate Mohan Yadav yes, uh, today. Kamal Nath said that our party will contribute to the development of Madhya Pradesh and by being in opposition, we will protect the rights of the people. Moving on, the President Draupadi Murmu has said artificial intelligence-based courses will provide solutions for upcoming challenges of society, addressing the second convocation ceremony of Indian Institute of Information Technology, Lucknow, today. The President expressed happiness that IIT Lucknow has started digital MBA program for the first time. Congratulating students, the President said that it's their duty to work for the growth of the country and make India a developed nation by 2047. She added that we have to find creative solutions so that even last persons of uh, society gets benefited. Governor Anandibin Patil said IIT Lucknow is working on holistic education. Institute has implemented the new education policy and also introduced yoga and sports for the mental and physical fitness of students. She added that we need to understand the changing demands of market because whole world is looking towards India. CM Yogi appealed to the students to contribute in nation building. He said that technology can play an important role in various sectors. UP government is working in this direction and students of IITs can contribute in this. Youth should contribute in making India a five trillion economy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the Global Partnership on Artificial Intelligence or GPAI Summit at uh, Bharat Mandapam in New Delhi this evening. GPAI is a multi-stakeholder initiative which aims to bridge the gap between theory and practice on artificial intelligence by supporting cutting-edge research and applied activities on AI-related priorities. Top artificial intelligence game changers from across the world will participate in different events including Intel, Reliance, Geo, Google, Meta, uh, Paytm and Microsoft. Our correspondent reports that India is the lead chair of GPAI in 2024. The summit will provide an opportunity to know what the world is thinking on artificial intelligence and what India is offering. Launched in June 2020 with 15 members, today the GPAI's membership has expanded to 28 member countries and the European Union. During the three-day summit, multiple sessions on diverse topics like artificial intelligence and global health, education and skilling, artificial intelligence and data governance, among others, will be organized. India has registered massive growth in the cruise sector in the last 10 years, replying to supplementaries during question hours in Rajya Sabha ports, shipping and waterways minister Sarbananda Sonawal said the number of passengers has registered three times growth and reached to over 8,72,000. He said the government is working with integrated approach for the promotion of cruise tourism. Mr. Sonawal said the longest river cruise MV Ganga Vilas from Varanasi to Dibrugar is fully booked till 2026. The minister said India has become the global destination for the river and ocean cruise. In men's cricket, India will take on host South Africa in their second T20 international at St. George's Park in Nakharba today. And the match will start at 8.30 p.m. Indian time. Earlier, the first game of the three-match series was abandoned even without a toss due to rain in Durban on Sunday. The third T20 will be played on Thursday. Surya Kumar Yadav is leading the men in blue, while Aidan Markram is leading the South African squad. And now let's take a look at the weather reports of the district headquarters of Nagaland. Kohima today recorded a maximum temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 9 degrees Celsius, while Dimapur had a maximum temperature of 24 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 14 degrees Celsius. Woka experienced a maximum temperature of 19 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 13 degrees Celsius. 
Mokokchung had a maximum temperature of 22 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. Mon had a maximum temperature of 23 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 13 degrees Celsius. Towards the east, Twinsang had a maximum temperature of 14 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 6 degrees Celsius. Zinebuto had a maximum temperature of 19 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 8 degrees Celsius. Pak had a maximum temperature of 13 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 7 degrees Celsius. That's all for the weather report. To end the news, here's a recap of our top stories. Governor Laganesan inaugurates Central Agricultural University Regional and Nature Conservation and Tragedy Sanctuary celebrates 25 years. Madeleine mm -hmm. State BJP protests against corruption. Mm -hmm. And the Indian government introduces three new criminal bills incorporating changes. And with this, we have come to the end of this news bulletin. Have a good evening.